So in my last video, I did fragrances that you could wear for the holidays or when it's cooler outside that are all designers. So I was thinking, you know what? What if you're a person that doesn't really want to go into the designers too much? You want to amp it up a little bit and have some really super unique smells that are maybe just a little bit powerful and not mainstream. So what I did, I went to my shelf and I picked out some fragrances that I like to wear when I just want to amp it up a little bit and smell like no one else. Hey everybody, it's Peter from Central. On this channel, I talk about fragrances. Designer, niche, perfumer, so on and so forth. So if you're into fragrances or you just wanna smell nice, consider subscribing and liking at any point throughout this video. There's a little red thing on the bottom here. You can push it and then you can subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and you get to hear more of me. I hope you do so and if you do, I wanna thank you in advance. And now let's get into some fragrances that I've picked that are on the niche side of things. So they're a little bit more expensive and smell great so you can stick out a little bit from the rest of the crew that always wears designers. Now of course if you're interested in the designer video of this particular kind of style I will link it in the top and you can watch it. Now I want to reiterate these are fragrances that I like to wear. There's a whole host of fragrances that anyone could pick and there's many many niche designers or many niche fragrances out there that one could wear. These are the ones that I like to wear personally. So I hope you enjoy it and let's dive right into it. Now the first one I want to mention in this list, uh, I kind of picked this one because I really like wearing this one to parties because it's such an unusual scent. It's by a company called Izemiyake. Now I know Izemiyake is a clothes designer, a really kind of fashion forward one. So it's not really a niche fragrance. However, this one right here, uh, it's hard to find. It's not easy to get anymore. I believe they stopped making it. But if you do get a hold of one, you will absolutely love it. And it is Noir, uh, Noir Ombre by L'Odyssey Pour Homme. First of all, the packaging is really nice. Looks like a book on the shelf and it kind of comes like that. Now for you guys out there who know what Noir Ombre smells like, it's a fabulous scent. It's a really beautiful one. You know, there's some spices in there. You have some nutmeg, some coriander, there's some leather, some cedar in this fragrance, and it's just a really gorgeous scent. So if you get a hold of this one somewhere, now don't pay too much for it, you know, but you'll see when you smell it that it's a great scent for the holidays and you'll smell like no one else. It's a miyake in itself, uh, you know, the, all the fragrances don't smell like mainstream at all. And this one has really niche quality. That's why I put it here as the first one, because it's not really a, a, a niche. It's more like a designer. But if you get a hold of this one somewhere, you find it for a good price, do pick it up. You will not be disappointed. Now, there's a couple of other ones that I have uh, in here. Going to be some Tom Fords later on. And Tom Ford as well is not really niche. However, the Tom Ford prices for the fragrances are niche. And that's why I have them in here. And I love wearing them to parties because they're so unique. But the first one we're going to do, or I guess the second one after this one, is going to be one by a German fellow, landsman of mine, called Geza Schön. And Molecule 04 by Geza Schön. This is sandalwood and it's made in a lab, so it's called Javanol. And it's just straight sandalwood. Now I think you could wear just straight sandalwood for the holidays and smell completely unique more, uh, other than everybody else. Because it is a deep, a woodsy scent and it is just absolutely gorgeous for the holidays if you, if you prefer something that's not quite as complex. You know, and this bottle right here, 100 mil, you know, somewhere around $100. So it's not too terrible. However, it is just one note. And you can also layer this one with other notes or with other fragrances if you'd like. Spray it underneath, spray the other ones on top. That kind of thing if you want to kind of give it a heavier sandalwood smell. But I love sandalwood. It's a very deep woodsy scent for the holidays. So if you want to start in kind of easy with the niche, 2017 release, it's Molecule 04 from Geza Schön. It's my first pick. The next one is going to be one that lots of people have talked about. It's a little bit fresher, but it has plenty of spices in it. And therefore, it's going to be a good, uh, it's an amazing, well-blended scent by Guerlain. And the one that I'm talking about is L'Homme Ideal, and it is the Extreme. Now, this one came out in 2020, so it is relatively new. And I really like this one. 
really the best out of the line. They kind of went a little bit better. All smell a little bit like almond, and this one has almond in the top notes for sure. But you're also gonna have some pink pepper. There's gonna be a little bit of bergamot at the top, but it gets deeper pretty quick. It has some plum in it, some cinnamon, and there's also some tobacco and some leather in this fragrance, patchouli and cedar in the base. So this one dives down a little bit heavier pretty quick. And it's not as almondy as some of the other ones in this line. But I like this one for the cinnamon and the plum. Kind of always reminds me, you know, of the holidays. So this is a really good one. And of course, Guerlain's fragrances are all extremely well blended. I believe the perfumer behind this one was Thierry Wasser. Thierry Wasser. Uh, and that's my second choice for something that's a little bit on the niche side that uh, no one else will really be wearing. You'll smell uh, more exclusive. Now, as the next one is going to be by a house and they don't do anything else, I think Girl Law, I don't know, does Girl Law do uh, clothes? I don't think so. I think they're more in skincare, right? So the next one is going to be by a house called or a fragrance company that is called Replica. And one of my favorite ones out of that line is called By the Fireplace. It was a 2015 release by Mason Martin Margiela. Looks kind of like a, a bottle that you would find in a physics lab. But we're gonna give this one a spray real quick, kind of see where we go. I really love the way this one uh, smells. There we go. Let's give it a little bit of a breather for a second before we get into it. Now. It's just absolutely gorgeous. What you're gonna have at the beginning of this one, you're gonna have some cloves. It's got a little bit of pink pepper, so it's a little tingly in your nose as you first spray it. There's also gonna be some chestnut and some guyac wood in this one. Vanilla, and then as it dries down, you're gonna have some cashmere. In. It's a beautiful fragrance. It's got a little bit of a, a smoky nuance to it. You know, of course, by the fireplace, it should. It's a really beautiful fragrance that's going to make you smell amazing, like you've been really having a good time. Now, another one that's really awesome by the house of Mar Mason Margiela, or uh, Martin Margiela, not Mason. Mason means house, I heard. This one right here, and it is Autumn Vibes. Now, Autumn Vibes was just released in 2021. And the reason this one made this list is because it actually smells like you're walking outside, you know, with the red leaves falling and they're kind of disintegrating on the ground a little bit. So it smells very earthy. Let's give this one a sm uh, spray too. It's a really nice one. It didn't get quite, a quite as much love as by the fireplace. But this one is a great, great fall scent. And it, for me, it totally reminds me of the red leaves as you're walking outside. It's a beautiful scent. You're gonna have some cinnamon in this one. You're gonna have some nutmeg. It's very earthy, there's a little cedar in the background and I guess the cinnamon and the nutmeg or the cardamom and the nutmeg really go, uh, make it feel like you're outdoors. It's a great scent and it's expertly blended. It's a beautiful fragrance that has you smelling like nobody else if you're going to a party more on the niche side. Now both of those fragrances that we just talked about from Replica, uh, they're going to be a little bit denser, a little bit outdoorsy, smoky, earthy. Now, if you want something from Replica that it smells also really incredible that you can wear to a party, maybe during the daytime when you don't want it to be too deep and too dense like you would in the evening, you could go with a fragrance by Replica called Coffee House. Now, Coffee House, or Coffee Break, I should say. It's called Coffee Break, not Coffee House. I guess I go to the Coffee House. But this is Coffee Break, and it came out in 2019. In this one, you're gonna have some lavender, you're gonna have some coffee, you're gonna have some milk in this one, vanilla and cedar as it dries down. It's also a wonderful fragrance. It kind of smells the same way the entire time you wear it. And you can actually spray this one quite a bit. And it's just an absolute gorgeous scent. Now, it's not going to carry too well if you're going to be outside for the party. But if you're inside, close quarters, it's a beautiful scent. Now, I think all of these, except maybe by the fireplace, is a little bit dense and maybe a little bit more masculine leaning. But this one right here is 100% unisex. And I think that autumn vibes could be as well. But coffee break, nice, smooth scent. If you want to go somewhere and smell like no one else, Smell like a coffee break, maybe during the day. It's an excellent scent. So the next one we're gonna go, we're gonna amp it up a little bit. And for this next one, I picked two Manceras. 
Well, I guess that's four. Two Manceras. And the one that I picked is Mancera Red Tobacco. Now with this one, right from the get-go, you gotta be a little bit careful. It's this beauty right here. Comes on a screw top, so you don't, I'm assuming so you don't empty it or spray it by accident. You wanna go pretty easy on this one as you spray it because it lasts for a long time and it is very, very powerful. But red tobacco is a gorgeous tobacco scent. You're going to have some jasmine, some tobacco, some vanilla from Madagascar in this one, amber, sandalwood. There's also gonna be a good amount of guyac wood, white musk, and some Haitian vetterer. Beautiful scent, very, very smoky, very tobacco-y, very dense, lasts you like, you know, 10 hours plus. This is one, if you go out in the morning and you know you're going to be gone all day and you don't want to respray it, this will carry you through the entire day and you'll smell absolutely amazing. And that is Red Tobacco from Mancera. Now, some of you go, okay, I like tobacco, but you know, I don't really want to smell like tobacco you know, as the day goes on. And I like Mancera, but what else is there from Mancera that I could wear for a holiday party more on the niche side? And I have another one from Mancera, and this one is called Oud Vanille. Now, Oud Vanille is gonna have a little bit of Oud in it, as the word says, it's some agar wood. It's also gonna have some black pepper, some saffron. There's gonna be some cardamom at the very top. This one has a magnetic top. I think that's the newer ones, actually. That's why it is so. And it has some floral notes, some uh, Madagascar vanilla again in the base, and also some Gaiag wood and a little bit of sandalwood. Now this one is a lot smoother, but also or equally as powerful. Most of the Man Manceras are really, really powerful and has really good projection and longevity. Yeah, Pierre Montal is behind this one. It's an excellent fragrance. It's a little bit smoother than the red tobacco and will last you all day. But you gotta like the oud. Me, personally, I love the oud. The oud is just a really uh, natural smell and it has a good amount of punch to it. If it is good, of course, oud. So, that's my choice number two from the house of Mancera. Now, the next ones are going to be equally maybe a little bit polarizing, you know, and I, I did say at the beginning that this is going to be something that I would wear. You might not, and that's okay. But, you know, for me, I really lo love wearing these and, you know, I'm a unique guy. I'm sure you are too. We all are unique. So the next ones that I have are going to be some of the orchids from Tom Ford. And the first orchid that we're going to talk about is going to be the black orchid. Is this one right here. This one came out in 2006 and it has an amazing amount of full, uh, notes in it. Beautiful fragrance, love wearing this one. Now to me the orchids are all a little bit on the unisex side, although I have the velvet orchid in front of me. We're going to talk about this one in just a second, which I think is a little bit more on the feminine side. But I think this one anybody could wear, 100% unisex. Gorgeous smell. Now at the top, when you first spray this one, you're gonna have some truffle, some gardenia, some black currant, some ylang ylang, jasmine, bergamot, mandarin, and almafi lemon. Now that's a whole bunch at the very beginning. But it is an absolute gorgeous scent. Now as it dries down a little bit, you're still going to have some florals and some spices and some gardenia, some fruity notes, some more ylang ylang, jasmine, and lotus. So there's a lot of notes in this one. And as it dries down, as it gets a little bit deeper, the fragrance is going to, like, uh, I guess, evaporate to Mexican chocolate, patchouli, vanilla, some incense, so it's got a little bit of a smokiness to it, some amber sandal sandalwood, vetiver, and musk. Now, for anybody, I think when you look at the plethora of fragrance notes in this one that are listed, who knows how, the, how many there are actually in this one, it's a gorgeous scent and beautifully crafted. Now, when you go to the Parfum, which came out in 2020, I believe, which is this golden bottle right here, the note's going to switch up a little bit. It's not going to have quite as many, but you'll still have the truffle at the top. And it's going to omit a lot of the other notes at the very top, and you're going to have some plum in this one. And as this one dries down, also, the notes are not going to be as plentiful as in the Black Orchid, even though they smell very reminiscent of one another. I mean, you can definitely tell it's one of the orchids, right? So this one right here, as it dries down, you're going to have some rum, still the ylang-ylang, just like in the other one, 
Now you did have Orchid in the other one. You also had Lotus in the black Orchid. So this one is a little bit, it's probably a little bit more floral. While, while this one right here, the perfume version of it is going to be a, just a little tad more masculine. Perhaps you've got some rum in there and then the base note's just gonna be patchouli. So it's, it's a little bit of a simplified version of the black or Orchid from 2006. And I actually wear this one quite a bit. I like the rum note. It gives it a really nice coziness. And so that's another choice from the orchids. Now, you know, for you girls out there, I think you could wear either one of these really, because you know, fragrances, you can wear what you'd like and I encourage you to. But Velvet Orchid is going to be just a little bit more on the feminine side. And in the Velvet Orchid, we're going to have four perfumers. I think the, I can't remember all of them. I know Antoine Maison Dieu, I believe is in, in one of the perfumers of this one. Now in Velvet Orchid, and it's a, a gorgeous little purple bottle, always kind of reminds me of Prince a little bit. <laughs> purple, I guess. And this one smells quite a bit different than the other orchids. Now, you know, I find myself that I can wear this one as well. You know, I like fragrances of all kinds. I don't care if it's, you know, feminine. If I like it, then I wear it. And I think you should too. So this one right here is going to start off with some honey and rum at the very top. I mean, who doesn't like honey and rum? You're going to have some mandarin orange and a little bit of bergamot. It seems like bergamot is kind of a little bit everywhere. And then as it dries down, you're going to have a couple of kinds of orchids in there. You're going to have some jasmine some rose oil. Now, not everybody is going to be okay with rose oil, but in this one, it is really hidden pretty well. It does give it a little bit more of a, a feminine kick though, for sure. And as it dries down, you're going to have some vanilla, some mirth, some suede, sandalwood, and then some lapdenum in the base. It's a little bit more feminine, but a gorgeous scent. And I, I wear this one. Actually, I take, this is my wife's. I wear this one because I like the way it smells. And I like the way my wife smells when she wears that one. So I think for the parties, you know, if you want to smell a little bit more on the elegant side, something unique, more on the, you know, expensive side, I think no matter what, you could wear one of the orchids, whether it's the Parfum, you know, with the rum in it, or the original one that first came out, or you know, the velvet orchid, a little bit more on the feminine side, but you can still wear it as a guy, at least in my opinion. Great choices from Tom Ford. Now, if you're like, okay, you know, I like Tom Ford, but I don't want something that, you know, could potentially smell a little bit too feminine. I have one more by Tom Ford that I absolutely adore and I only wear on special occasions. And that one's going to be Noir Extreme by Tom Ford. I absolutely love this fragrance. It's such a good one. Now this one is a, quite a bit deeper and darker. It's gonna have some cardamom at the top. You know, it's gonna have some nutmeg in there, saffron, and it has the note of kulfi, which is a dessert. Love wearing this one. The first time I smelled this one, I was like completely floored. It's such a, a unique scent. Now as it dries down, you have a little bit of rose and then you have some uh, jasmine. We got some woody notes, amber and vanilla in the base of this fragrance. Uh, Sanya Constant is behind this one. Like I said, it came out in 2015 and it is really an elegant scent. This is something that I would wear if I know that I'm going out later on. Kind of a nice, powerful, elegant scent. But talking about elegant scents, the next two that I have are really elegant and that's more something if you're going to be around a bunch of um, professionals and you want to smell your best. This one has got a little bit of party in it for me because it's quite deep and dense and you got to be a Tom Ford lover in order to wear Tom Ford Noir Extreme because it's a little bit more on the extreme side, but it is an absolute gorgeous scent and it'll last all day as well. So the next two are going to be my two last ones and it is going to be my one of my favorite holiday scents that I like actually wearing all year long, but especially in the winter time, you know, when you're all sitting, when everybody's sitting around and being uh, merry and jolly and that sort of thing. I really love this next one. And that one's gonna be, as well as my last one, is going to be from the House of Creed. Now, 
Lots of people don't really like this one from Creed, I guess. I don't know why. Uh, I think it's an amazing release. It's a 2017 release and it is Viking. Viking lends itself to be worn all year long, as I think most of the Creed fragrances, you could really wear a signature scent and always smell amazing. What I love most about these fragrances is that they dry down and just have an amazing smell. Your skin, even the next day, smells absolutely to die for. For me, they're worth the price. For some people, perhaps not. So this one is Creed Viking, came out in 2017. You're initially at the top spray, you're gonna have some pink pepper and you're gonna have some mint. Does it smell like a Viking you would imagine, like the series Viking, dirty and earthy and all that? It really doesn't. You have the note of absinthe in here, and then you also have some rose and you have some clove and allspice in this fragrance. And that's one of the reasons I think why you could wear this one absolutely all year long. Because you have the, look at that beautiful white sprayer and it really just, mm, it's an, a gorgeous scent. I wear this one in the summer. Whenever I wanna feel elegant and have a little bit of spice to it, I wear this one. But you could also completely wear this one in the winter time for an elegant gathering and just smell absolutely phenomenal. The clove and the allspice make its way in here and it gives you a nice warm feeling that you desire when you're being jolly with your friends. As it dries down, you're gonna have some cedar, some tonka bean, and some musk. You know, expertly blended, beautiful notes, and a beautiful smell. You gotta get your nose on it. At least try it and see how it does on your skin. Now, these are a little bit more on the mature side. So, you know, these are definitely fragrances that most people would wear with suits or a little bit more of a formal gathering. But I find myself wearing this one just because I like it. But the next one that I have is probably one of the favorite ones for me from the House of Creed. When you want to be the most elegant you could possibly be and yet have a little bit of smokiness behind you, then this final one by Creed is gonna do the trick. And it is of course none other than Creed Royal Oud. Now, you gotta be an Oud lover and even if you're not an Oud lover, Creed Royal Oud is really beautiful. I think even people that don't like Oud really could get into this one. At the beginning, you're going, you're going to have some pink pepper, some lemon and some bergamot, citruses with some pepper on top of it. I mean, that's literally what it smells like. And then you immediately dive into some cedar. But the most beautiful thing, like I said, about the Crete fragrances is the way they dry down. They smell pretty good at the beginning, but as they dry down and settle and as they develop on your skin, you have to wear these on your skin. I spray them on my arms and I spray them on the neck. I don't, I very rarely spray them on the clothes because these are just exquisite as they dry down and mix with your skin. If you wanna leave an impression and you wanna smell fabulous at one of your you know, dinner parties and really leave an impression, Royal Oud is an amazing scent. And I hope that you have a good time. Enjoy yourself wherever you are. If you did, don't forget you know, to love, like, subscribe. It really does help the algorithm. I hope you got something out of this. Until next time, I want you to take good care of yourself. Always smell nice, and I will talk to you soon. Until then, Centrail.